Gentlemen, apologies for the delay. My name is Michael Williams. Welcome to the uh, press launch of the IPCC report on mitigation. Our speakers today are the chairman of the IPCC, Rajendra Prachauri. We have the two co-chairs of Working Group 3, Oganladi Davidson and Bert Metz. We also have around 15 lead authors with us today here in the room. Uh, I'll start off by asking Dr. Prachauri to take the floor. Thank you very much, uh, and thank you for waiting patiently. We're delighted to have you all over here on an occasion which we think is extremely important uh, for dealing with the problem of climate change, and also because this marks the third of a series of uh, working group reports that the IPCC has brought out. We still have the synthesis report, which would be coming out in November. Uh, and that particular report would be based on an integration and synthesis of the essential material that's contained in the three working group reports. Let me give you a one-phrase description of this report. I would say it's stunning in its brilliance and it's razor sharp, razor sharp in its relevance. Um, it's really a remarkable step forward. Uh, from the knowledge that was contained in the third assessment report, which of course was an excellent report. And there are several respects in which we have gone really far. Let me also give you the context in which the relevance of this report would be established and would work over the coming months and, and years. We have the 13th Conference of the Parties under the Framework Convention on Climate Change taking place in Bali in December this year. And clearly the science that the IPCC has been able to assess will have a direct impact and we hope a profound influence on the discussions that take place and the direction towards an agreement in the 13th Conference of the Parties. We must view this against the background as this report has brought out that between 1970 and 2004, the growth in greenhouse gas emissions has been about 70%. So the world is obviously on a warming path, which the first and second working group reports also brought out, and particularly the impacts of climate change, which the working group two report brought out. I will not get into major details because those will be provided by the co-chairs of Working Group 3. But let me just highlight a few things that should be of some interest to you and, of course, to the global community at large. This time around, we have assessed the stabilization of multi-gas scenarios and scenarios dealing with the stabilization of a range of gases that are relevant, not just carbon dioxide. This report has emphasized the importance of sustainable development and the nexus between mitigation measures, of course adaptation measures were covered in the Working Group 2 report, and sustainable development. It's um, of great satisfaction that this report for the first time has dealt with lifestyles and consumption patterns as an important means by which we can bring about mitigation of greenhouse gas emissions. So of course you can look at technology, you can look at policies, but what is an extremely powerful message in this report is the need for human society as a whole to start looking at changes in lifestyles and consumption patterns. It's also for the first time carried out an assessment of nuclear energy. This has not been done by the IPCC in the past. It has worked very closely, this working group has worked very closely with civil society, with industry, and all stakeholders, because we necessarily have to derive experience and knowledge from these sections of society who have knowledge, for instance, in the case of industry, on a whole range of technologies 
in the case of civil society on issues that I've just mentioned in terms of influencing uh, the behavior of the public, the behavior of the consumer. We've um, also carefully looked at the price of carbon and how this could influence uh, a whole lot of developments, including the development of technology. It's uh, probably naive to believe that merely developing technologies in labs and in workshops would be the answer, unless there's a package of, of policies, unless there are market forces, which in this case are represented by the price uh, attached to carbon, you're not likely to get a major dissemination of technologies, no matter how meritorious and desirable they would be. So I will not say any more, but I want to end by saying that the three working group reports, the first one dealt with the physical science basis of climate change, and it gave you an assessment of how the climate of the world had been changing, the manner in which we've seen changes in precipitation, uh, the melting of the glaciers, sea level rise, and then Working Group 2 has carefully assessed the impacts, adaptation opportunities, and the vulnerability of different parts of the world. And now we have a set of solutions which have been carefully evaluated and assessed in the Working Group 3 reports. How do we bring about a reduction and a stabilization of emissions of greenhouse gases? And this has been provided in the framework of technology, technologies, uh, policies, institutional and societal responses, all of which have been presented in this report for your consideration. And I'll end by saying that this rich material that we have in the three working group reports will now be used in the preparation and we are well on our way to the preparation of the synthesis report which will be ready in November of this year. So this is all I had to say by way of introduction, and uh, you'll get all the meat and all the interesting stuff from uh, my colleagues, the co-chairs of Working Group 3. Okay, we'll now pass over to the co-chairs, Bert Metz and Ogun Lottie Davidson. Thank you, Chair of IPCC. Let me, on behalf of Working Group 3, extend uh, gratitude and welcome to all of you here to formally give you some ideas of this report. Before I start, i like to tell you that we'll, we are trying to summarize a report that is over, yeah, that's over <laughs> a, a thousand pages. <laughs> and we'll try as best as possible to give you enough information so that it will cover the interest and reflect your concerns. However, after our presentation, we will be very much available to answer questions. So in short, if I should describe this report, I will describe it in one sentence. This report is all about solutions to the climate change problem. That it is it's the, by NGOs, by industry now in provide repairing this report we involve quite a lot of people to be exact almost 170 authors to be exact 168 authors we are involved in preparing this report these authors cover a wide range of people all over the world. In fact, to be exact, again, 55 of these 168 authors, which is roughly ab around 40%, are from develop developing countries and about 100 from developed countries. In addition to these authors, each of the chapters got significant support from contributing authors who provided expert opinion and expert information to suit 
the particular aspects of the report that we need 